in between Wednesdays. Just trying to get by to the next fix, living between Wednesdays. Prefer the comics over the Netflix. One thing I did want to ask about as well, so, again, the research I got to do on you was really fun because there's a lot of interviews with you out there and a lot of oh, podcasts man. you've been on and told some cool stories. One that I thought was hilarious, um, I believe it's your first performance that was done in a, I believe it's a bowling alley, and there were you, I might get some of these details. Yeah, no, I would I'm love just... for you to tell the story, but basically it ends up being like, these two guys are set up to play music in a bowling alley. They're tearing down, and somehow you ended up performing there and getting quite a crowd and making them quite a bit of money. Um, can you tell that story correctly? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you just told it. Um, yeah, that uh, that was in Colorado, and I was in Colorado, and I'd been on tour, and I was doing – I played in Denver, Colorado on the Friday night, and on Saturday I went to a G.I. Joe convention because i love gi joe and i was like this is great i'm going to colorado i'm gonna play this rap show in denver I'm gonna drive to loveland colorado which was you know like an hour or two away and uh that's where the gi joe con was the next day so i go to the gi joe con and i've got songs about gi joe and um i i meet a guy there who was very nice and very eager and he's like Oh man, are you doing a show? You got to do a show here. You know, it's GI Joe Con. You rap about GI Joe, and I was like, "Look, they didn't ask me to do a, a perform yeah. at the convention. I'm just here at the convention, like having fun, enjoying it. Like that's great." So this guy goes across the street from the convention, and there's this bowling alley, and he comes back and he's like, "Hey man, guess what? I went across the street to the bowling alley and told them that you're here, and I booked you a show for tonight. You're gonna play at the bowling alley." And I'm like, "What? Uh, oh." Okay, like, thank you, but what is this? And um, so he goes and, you know, Josh is a great guy, but I just met this guy. Yeah. He goes to, like, the business center at the hotel and makes all these flyers and he spelled word burglar wrong. And he, like, gives out all these flyers at the G.I. Joe convention saying word burglar is playing at the bowling alley tonight after the convention. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, I guess I got to figure out what's going on. So he's like, yeah, you just go to the bowling alley. You talk to this guy. He's a manager. He knows you're coming. He's excited. It's going to be great. You can play at the bowling alley tonight. Everyone's going to come over from the comic for, from the G.I. Joe convention. It's going to be a dope show. It's going to be awesome. So I'm like, okay, sure. This sounds like a fun adventure. What the heck? I'm up for it. Look, they want me to rap. How can I say no? I'm honored. I go to the bowling alley and, you know, there's like, People from the G.I. Joe convention are coming over. They're like, yeah, we're going to watch the show. This is great. I'm, like, trying to figure out where I'm going to perform. So I get there, and I ask for the for this guy who apparently was going to let me play. And they're like, oh, yeah, that guy works the afternoon shift. He's not here tonight. Um, uh. And I was like, well, what do – okay, I think I'm supposed to play. Like, there's all these people here, and they're, like, wanting to see me play. And um, and there's music going out on, on, like, the patio outside. He's like, oh yeah, we'll just go talk to those guys outside. They're they're the music guys. <laughs> so I go out there and there's Carl and Steve. And Carl and Steve are playing like cover music for just like people who are at the bowling alley taking a break and ordering like some chicken wings or something and like families. Like there's not many people out there. And these guys are just like playing like, you know, CCR or whatever. And they're just like playing some jams. And, uh, and I go out there and I'm like, oh, hey guys, um, I guess I'm going on after you guys uh you know uh just let me know when i can like plug in my laptop and and set up and uh and they're like no no we're 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 the music we when we're done it's over like we're we're leaving at eight o'clock i was like oh no they told me i was gonna perform here at eight o'clock so i'm trying to figure out what's going on carl and steve are like not having it they're like who are you what are you gonna do and i'm like i'm a rapper from canada i'm gonna rap some <laughs> songs about gi joe and they're like what is this guy like is this a joke <laughs> and and carl and steve they're like let's say that you know they're seasoned guys right they're uh nice way to they're them. they're nice and they they've they've played a couple bowling alleys <laughs> and uh they're just not hearing this nerdy rapper guy from canada um so they're trying to wrap up and uh and i was like look can you just at least let me play like one song 
and they were not having it. They weren't into it. So finally I convinced them because they're like, look, this is our gear. We pack up the speakers and then we're out of here. We're done. Like this is our night. Like, and they, they've got a pitcher of beer, like an empty pitcher, which they're playing for basically like, you know, donations. So there's yeah. like some, some coins and a couple dollar bills in there. Uh, so I said, look, can you at least let me just play one song? There's people coming in and they're like, okay, play one song. You got five minutes. So they wrap up. I plug in my laptop and right away just grab the mic and I just start rapping about Carl and Steve. And I'm just like, I'm like, everybody give it up for Carl and Steve. And they're like, what is going on? And then I'm like freestyling and I'm just like rhyming about them and rhyming at the bowling alley. And, uh, and you know, crowds coming in and I was like, Carl and Steve are letting me perform, but you know, they want to go home, but you know, you should give some money to Carl and Steve. So I'm holding up the, their beer pitcher and people just start throwing in money. Like nice. bills after bills. So then I'm looking at Carl and Steve and I'm like, hey, is that buy me like another song or two? And they're like, yeah, OK, OK, man. <laughs> so I just continue to just keep rapping. Next thing I know, there's like people in cosplay that show up in like G.I. Joe and someone's dressed like the Baroness. And like they just come up and start dancing with me. And Carl and Steve are like, what is going on? They're loving it. And during every song, I just keep shouting out Carl and Steve and I'm getting the crowd like to cheer for Carl and Steve. And basically everyone was loving Carl and Steve. And there's like a huge crowd of people who kept coming in from the convention across the street because there was like nothing to do after this con closed. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And they were just Carl and Steve made a ton of money that night and uh, they let me perform. Like I did like a full set and nice. uh, had a great night. Um, but yeah, it was a uh, it was a really fun experience, uh, very surprising, and I had just kind of been thrown into it. And um, yeah, it's just you just kind of got to take what what comes to you, right? And you know, when Car life gives you Carl and Steve, you <laughs> just got to shout them out. <laughs> Love it. That is that is a wild story, but awesome. It's so fun. Yeah, um, I got to look them up someday. I don't know if they're in Loveland, Colorado. You know, I'm. Uh, I was joking. I'm going to make a song about them and see if I can find them. Carl Do and Steve. It. But then they, afterwards they were like, do you want to come back? You got to come back tomorrow night, man. I was like, no, I'm going back to Toronto. Um, oh my God. I just came to like, you know, find some cheap GI Joes at the convention and you know, whatever. But yeah, it's a fun time. Amazing. Uh, speaking of, of, of coming back to Toronto, um, for, for someone like myself who I have next to no knowledge about, rap in toronto or anywhere in canada really um if someone wanted to see a rap show obviously with covid that is not going to happen um but as stuff opens up more often where is it in toronto that you would tell people to go or that could they could see you um whatever yeah. the spot it is w what would you recommend well you know i hope we're still waiting to see what venues are gonna look like in toronto and you know some places are opening up now we did a regular show called the five dollar rap show and we did it in kensington market for we were about to celebrate our 10th anniversary right before the pandemic so literally it was like going to be i think april 2020 was going to be our 10th anniversary wow so um and we had been doing that. We started that at Rancho Relaxo on college, and then we moved it to Handlebar in Kensington Market. So okay. for a while, you could go see amazing indie underground hip hop at Kensington Market, $5 rap show at Handlebar. Hopefully, if things open up again, I'm not sure when the like live music spots are slowly opening. Um, and I do that with more or less, who's an amazing local rapper and DJ and like, you know, one of my best friends. And uh, he, he and I, I'm, we've talked like, yeah, we'd love to bring it back. So hopefully $5 rap show will, will return. Uh, it still feels a bit early to figure that out, but I'll always be gigging. Like, you know, as soon as venues open up again, like I just love to play. So I, I'll play anywhere in the city. And, um, you know, if they got a sound system and uh, Carl, if they got a Carl and Steve, I'll be there. <laughs> so uh, I, yeah, um, $5 rap show was one of the, only regular rap nights I knew about um, okay. and and that was good and then we do we played at um, the rec room we usually did a big concert uh, usually after fan expo there's like for nerdy stuff there's like nerd noise night you know play at the horseshoe Rivoli uh, anywhere comedy bar like just all these great venues across Toronto you know there's so many great live places or there were I mean places kept closing so I think El Macombo is opening up again and um, 
like in Drawings with Words, which is one of my videos, we shot uh, the concert footage there. I was playing at the Alma Combo on mm -hmm. Spadina. So I know that they were planning to reopen, but I don't know. So I hope so. It's a, yeah, it's a tough question right now. Yeah, know. but so pre-COVID, those would be sort of the, the spots you'd recommend. And, and I will uh, diligently, I always try and go through and, and down below have all sorts of links. Um, and I will, of course, have links to your, your Bandcamp site so people can check out your albums, um, get them digitally, which is how I've got them, um, as well Thanks. as, of course, your merch. Um, when it comes to your, your merch as well, you obviously have your album-related content. So I know you've got um, a new hoodie, or not hoodie, um, a toque coming out, correct? Yeah, yeah. There's a Rap Viper toques. We've got T-shirts. Um, and again, it's just like fun it's just fun stuff to do. Like, you know, I just want to do it. Like, you know, my friends are like these amazing artists who draw these great logos. And it's like, yeah, let's put this on a shirt. Let's do it. And people want them. So yeah, there's a rap Viper shirt by Cody Peters, which we have right now. Uh, and Cody and I worked together at silver snail years ago and he's drawn a bunch of art. Uh, we did a comic series together called snake or pizza. You know, I always feel like I got to shout everybody out. There's so many <laughs> stories behind every little thing, like every project I put out, I feel like, Oh, I just want to like, you know, I can't just like glaze over it. I got to be like, well, let me tell you about this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, do. we've, we've got some cool merch. So if you need things to cover your head or torso or, you know, well, that's probably it right now. Uh, we can cover you. <laughs> Beautiful. And, and again, links all day long down below. Um, Love those links. You go on links too. Oh, I mean, uh, hyperlinks. I in the description down below, I will have links for people. Yeah, to I check click out. links a lot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I go on. I go on the internet. And I click links. Oh yes, I love links. They're great. Links um, are great. I links. like links. I like Link from Zelda. Yeah, many links. I mean, I prefer Zelda over Link because you know, dude never <laughs> talks. But like, whatever. Um, so we we've pretty well come to the end of my my list of questions that I've, I've sort of run through with you. Um, this is where I question you now. I bring it on yeah okay well, what's, rap. I can't. what's the best comic you've read this month this month um in the last 30 days what was the best comic i've read um not to be uh biased um but genuinely um i very much loved crown and anchor uh, by um the a wonderful couple I, I interviewed them um tobin and alaire um i gotta say the last name wrong i am so sorry um Rassico. um it's basically like a sci-fi swashbuckling adventure um they're they've just finished their second kickstarter i think today like within a couple hours um it did smashingly well so the the book itself is getting put out um and they've got something like eight books planned total um so that's really cool so again crown and anchor um, if you're into the mainstream, uh, of course, um, I'd probably say Zadarsky's Daredevil has been pretty cool. Um, I just saw him at Loblaws. No, I won't say which one. Yeah, man, yeah, we, yeah. We, no, don't, don't. We were both we looking for Halloween candy, and Sick. Uh, and it was like I was like, sorry, dude, they're sold out. I was like, no, I was like, yeah, we we each were like looking for Halloween candy at like 5 p.m. on Halloween day. So I was like, I'm going to have a bunch of kids coming to my apartment door and I have nothing. So uh, we wound up getting, my wife found like these, these like pop rock candies and they were packaged from this troll movie. And the I was like, oh, that okay. movie came out like five years ago. Yeah. And I was like, when's this candy from? And the actual expiry date had been like sharpied out on the back. So it was some shady, like, convenience store that's like, well, let's just sell this candy. And I, my yeah. wife and I were like, I hope this isn't poison. <laughs> <laughs> so we gave those out and Quality Street because it was, like, the only candy we could find. You know those tins? Oh, hell yeah. Dude, those tins are, like, 18 bucks. It was yeah, like, look. what am I doing? And, like, if I was, like, seven years old, do I want Quality Street? No, I want, like, Kit Kat and, like, a yep. can of orange crush <laughs> <laughs> reese's please all day long yeah. <laughs> um that's amazing so um, we were the weirdos with expired pop rocks and quality street <laughs> <laughs> I do mean, pop rocks even expire i don't know no, I, I doubt it come on there it, it's more 
sugar and chemical than it is food product. Um, I don't know. I don't know what Chip Zdarsky found because he was like, "I gotta go to check the dollar store." So, um, but yeah, I've known him for years, and uh, I haven't read his Daredevil. I liked his Spider Man. Okay. Uh, yeah. See, that's the inverse. I've never read his Spider Man. I've been told it's good. Um, it looks cool. Um, but yeah, no, I haven't checked it out yet. But yeah, the Daredevil's pretty darn good. Um, and people, I feel like people are gonna judge me when I say this. Savage Avengers, um, I love it. It's basically Conan gets thrown into the Avengers main world and mixes up with all the characters. There's been a, in an e- a recent issue. There's a scene where they get arrested and Conan needs to break out. And he's with Deadpool, so he kicks him through the doors and Deadpool steals the keys and unlocks them. It's zany. It's weird. It's hyper violent. Um, so probably who's writing that? Um. Oh, I should know this. I really don't. Um, it's not Al Ewing, is it? No. Or Jason Aaron? No, I haven't. Yeah, Aaron I haven't was read on it. it. Um, yeah, I feel like when I first heard about it, maybe Aaron was on, but I haven't read it. Uh, Creators: Gary Dugan, Mike Dedato Jr. Oh, uh, Gary Dugan, yeah. Yeah, and they had Finch do a couple of covers. Um, yeah, it's a fun. It's a fun read. Um, highly recommended. Um, and you know what? It's your turn now. Um, so what is it, Word Burglar, that you are uh, reading and or listening to as a, a man of, of musical taste? Well, I have my giant stack. <laughs> this is like it's literally... Scary. This is like a stack of Ooh. like unread... I mean, makers I've read. Um, Rorschach's been... Rorschach's been cool. I'm getting working my way through that. Tom How King. Is, yeah. It's um, it's a bit denser. Like I love his vision. So basically, Tom King wrote the Vision a few years ago, mm-hmm. which was like one of the best comics I'd read from Marvel in years and years. So I have this thing where if I read like one book that a creator does, and I just like absolutely am head over heels nuts for it, I'll like go read everything else they've done, oh, yeah. and I keep following them, trying to recapture that like feeling, right? Um. I have to say nothing Tom King has done since Vision has really wowed me as much as that Vision story, which if you can track down, there's a collected hardcover of it. It's so good. Um, but I like his Batman. He's an incredible writer. Rorschach, Rorschach is good. There's like some interesting things they're doing with it. I'm a huge Watchmen fan, so it's, you know, there's two schools of thought whether you want to read more Watchmen or if you just are like, Alan Moore just left it at this alan moore and just, dave gibbons yeah. this is the only one don't touch it so that's a whole other debate um but it's okay it's it's I, it's a bit slow there's a great issue that has a character where they do a bit of a steve ditko reference which is really oh, cool. cool um batman i'm i'm reading still i was like hey you know there's you know i don't know i'm behind on batman there's like are you following it at all there's like ghost maker and I clown do. puncher and bat <laughs> kicker i don't know who all these guys are there's like all these new is it yep. clown puncher is that his name i get it wrong. um like clown not clown killer you, you're t- you're talking the the kid he's got like a, a bike helmet and a mohawk on it yellow yeah clown. yeah what um, is his name clown killer i think it's clown killer. i think it is clown killer yeah, yeah clown killer this... i'm like totally blanking yeah I, I, and like... I loved him in that i thought he was a cool yeah. character and oh look peacekeepers in here yeah so peacekeeper ghost maker clown killer yeah um alfred Tickler, uh, <laughs> who knows gonna who's gonna be next? Well, Alfred's dead. Spoiler alert. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, it's that's a few years old now. <laughs> Crossover. That's been cool. Donny Cates, GI Joe, Larry Hama still writing this is good. Fantastic for this. Uh, Jason Liu, local Canadian, yep. uh, incredible creator. He's in here, so I haven't read this yet. I'm way behind on my Kirkman stuff, so I've got like Oblivion Song and. Oh. Uh, skybound x i've been reading that or skybound 10 whatever it's called that's been that's been okay um savage dragon which is like the craziest comic on the racks still reading that oh i got this from strange adventures they sent me this amazing steve mcniven variant Ooh. moon knight signed by steve i'm just bragging here now this is like show and tell and this is oh. cool because this is jed mckay so it's yeah. a cool like steve and jed mckay are both uh from the east coast so Nice little Nova Scotia repping. My buddy Mike Holmes, definitely check out uh, his new book. Um, this is from First Second, My Own World. It's okay. like just this beautiful kind of coming of age kind of 
fantasy, like really creative book. Mike's just incredible. Um, oh yeah, and the Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips books. So I've got to oh. read. I finished this one, Bad Weekend. Have you read this? I haven't. My other half, she's got a, a bunch of their stuff, and it looks amazing. This one, as a comic book fan, go. Everyone go read this, Bad Weekend. So good. And then, uh, yeah, I haven't read these two yet. but So True. this is like my stack of stuff that ideally I can like read like this week. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't I, think it's going to happen. I, see, I got bad news because you're almost at the end of the week, buddy. <laughs> I know. Like the way I'm rambling about things, I can't possibly fit in time to read, right? I know. It's not happening. Amazing. Um, yeah, that'll be like a month at least. That'll oh, yeah. No, 100%. Happen. My my read pile is a tr- I have a I have a short box damn near full that is my two read pile. And it's like... I want to go and pick up my comics from my comic shop, but I'm like, I can't fit them in the read pile. I should, I should read some more before I add some more, you know? Yeah. Um, I feel like that, that's the way with all of us though. It's, I don't know. It's an addiction. The, the comics, it's like you, you, you like one enough and it's just like all of a sudden there's thousands and more. It's just, yeah, the medium. I love it. I love, you know, and then when the art, you know, especially when the art's great and you're just like staring at the art so long and then it's like, you get lost in it. I just, yeah. Love comics. Never get sold. Still get that rush. You know, Absolutely. flip to the next page. It's the best. Every time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, my last question then for you tonight, um, pending any others from yourself, uh, is simply, <laughs> what do you want your fans to know? That you're just a sweetheart, Conrad. Like, that. <laughs> you're just the best. Like, this is a treat. Thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me ramble on with some yarns. Um and uh yeah this is just great i want anyone watching to keep watching you do this show because this is uh this is great wnr yeah thank you after the best day of the week so yeah you're you're doing it awesome well thank you and and again thank you so much for coming on um i would love to do this again at some point so maybe when your next album drops or something goes on we can connect that'd be my pleasure yes thank Thank you you. yeah it it, it's you're such a fun person to talk to. Oh, get um, get out of here! Yeah. Um, <laughs> Why don't you go log off? <laughs> Very well. Um, <laughs> Thanks. But yourself yes. too, man. Totally. Thank you. Uh, and and for the folks out there, again, check out all the links down below, um, so you can check out all of Bergie's albums, uh, his merch, uh, and of course, I am going to do my best to get the huge list of references, so you can see everything else uh, that we've talked about, uh, and always thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you next time happy wednesday golden age to present digest to oversize never miss new comic day yeah no surprise so where's my no prize check the letter columns can't find issue two yeah collector problems cliffhangers mysteries you need answers when did batman become green lantern i get it true believer not lying always up for an awesome summer crossover